I'm Dylan Lane of Contra Valley Paranormal, and we have returned to a town that's known for its history and possible paranormal hotspots, such as the historic Texas Grill. But we are here to investigate a location that is so well known for its paranormal that many people have come from all over to investigate it. A location that we have investigated numerous times and have caught amazing activity every time we came here. So come join us on this project known as A Haunting in Ballinger, Paranormal Investigation of the Old Park Hotel. My name is Dylan Lane. I am the lead investigator of Concho Valley Paranormal. What's wrong over here, Josh? Seven years ago, me and my friends Josh Mata. We're right here. Yeah, right. There's nobody down okay. the trail. And Anthony Doffenbaugh made the decision to become paranormal investigator. Since then, we have built a team that now consists of two other members, Tyler Tenel Things that... and Michaela Truncoso. Uh, nothing that angry. We have traveled to locations throughout Texas that have long since been forgotten to document real evidence of the paranormal. So sit back and watch as we attempt to break open the veil between the living and the dead to make contact with those who still dwell within the shadows. Did you hear that? Yep. This hotel, the Old Park Hotel, is a very historic location. It was built in 1886. Throughout history, it has been so many things. It's been a bordello or a whorehouse twice. It was a schoolhouse, a courthouse, pretty much anything you can think of that a building could be, this was the Multiple families have lived here over the last 150 years. Multiple people have been in here. Several people have died in here. There have been over 30 different confirmed spirits here from children to the women of the night during the bordello days and very many of these others plus. There could even be a malevolent force in the downstairs hallway. And we're gonna focus a lot of our attention during this investigation in that area and try to get as many of the spirits to come out and uh, communicate with us through the, over the next couple of nights during our isolation sessions and the big team experiment during our investigation here at the Old Park Hotel. So let's go on inside and see what we can come up with. See, as you walk in here, you can just feel it. The energy that just surrounds this place, it's no matter what, it's always colder in here. We believe that that to be a paranormal phenomenon because no matter what the temperature is outside, it's always so cold in here. It's so amazing. This place is very historic. It's so well taken care of. And the owners of this place are awesome. And I'm pleased to say that they are, have allowed us to come in here for one final project at this hotel. See, as we walk down into these hallways, you just, you, it's like you're stepping back in time. I mean, look at this, like, historic staircase. Like, you just feel that energy hitting you. And downstairs, as a matter of fact, Anthony, during our isolation project, we were right down there. He had an immense experience where he heard this crazy shuffling sound coming from the end of the hall. And 
all of a sudden it led to these really loud bangs and it scared him so much he cussed the hell out of him <laughs> and um, eventually actually ran out of the building to tell me and Dan what happened and then I came in here had some experiences and also down here at the very end of this hall and this is where Anthony had his crazy experience So you come down here, you just you just feel all that static energy just hitting you. It's like boom, 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 boom. When you pass through these rooms, you just feel it like it's like they're just reaching out. Like you stick your hand in here, and you just feel like like something's just gonna grab you and pull you in. That's how much energy and emotions flow through these walls. So it was right back here, Dan. When we did that isolation session, he came down here. And right here, where Anthony is standing now, we had a camera set up, and he was right over here. And he's looking out this way, he hears a sound coming from one of these rooms, and he says, I hear you. But then, all of a sudden, he picks it up on one distinct voice. And that audio, those EVPs, was just complete, it's like three sentences, put short sentences put together, and we're gonna go ahead and play that for you right now. Down here as well, that pillar used to sit right here. The first time we ever investigated this place, when we were done, we had a uh, plasma globe sitting right here and when we were done with our investigation Dan came down and unplugged the plasma globe and as he was walking away something amazing happened the light from his headlamp that he had on his head interfered with the infrared lights coming from our DVR camera that was sitting right there in that corner and when that happened it shut the IR lights off so that way it could reset itself and when that happened in that split two seconds a figure manifested right here where that uh, plasma globe was sitting and it looked like it was about this high about child's height and it kind of like was standing here it was real ripply it was like static -y. it was weird but it just manifested out of nowhere right here where that plasma globe was and it just like kind of looked like it did that and it stood back up and then at that moment, the IR lights kicked back on and it just completely disappeared. No static came from anywhere else. Just that one figure just manifested and then disappeared within that, within that two to three seconds of those IR lights being off. And we're gonna go ahead and show that to you right now. In this room, when we first investigated this place, the same night we caught that apparition, I was in here, me and Anthony were both in here. Anthony was standing right there where he is now in the doorway, and I was standing like right here. 
and I had the spirit box set up right here and I had what did I have in my hand I had a device in my hand. I think it was a k2 meter but I had a device in my hand and I was and I had the picture but it's not here they used to have the pictures of some of the people who haunt this place right here on the shelf but they're not here now but I held up one of the pictures and I'm like who is this and it was a picture of a woman named Margaret and then out of my left ear I heard Margaret and I was like turned to Anthony and I'm like I just heard Margaret and this is Margaret and right after that I felt this weird sensation on my leg like something had a hold of me like right here and it was weird it's like it was just like doing this and I'm like I turned to Anthony I'm like something's got a hold of my leg and all of a sudden the spirit box spat out really quick very clear response regarding what I felt it said it's got a hold of you now we're gonna go ahead and show that to you right now go and touch it show that whole segment of what I just said or you can go ahead and show well since I said that we'll just show the segment afterwards I think it'll be easier to do that while not even investigating the mic I'm wearing captures a male voice saying hello this just proves that no matter what you're doing or what time of day the spirits of the hotel are always ready to interact I think it'll be easier to do that. I think it'll be easier to do that. I think it'll be easier to do that than try to implement the audio. My name is Rosalinda Campos, and um, I am originally from Del Rio. Uh, moved to San Angelo uh, two years ago for my uh, birthday. I wanted to do something different, and I saw on Facebook regarding the haunted hotel here in Ballinger, October 22nd, two years ago. We ended up coming here to the hotel, and it was with uh, Alejandro Dominguez, the uh, paranormal investigators. I remember on one of the rooms that we were at, and we each had uh, the device uh, that, uh, I guess, detecting the uh, ghost spirits. And uh, I remember on one of the rooms, the I guess the first I felt something was as if somebody was twirling with my hair. And uh, sure enough, some of the uh, investigators came and they did uh, see there was a detection of some activity. And, um, and then there was another room. Um, I don't know, something happened probably to some lady. And all of a sudden, I just started feeling sad. Uh, like if something had happened with the person there. And just a sad feeling at one of those rooms as we kept going down the hall and into the rooms. Uh, we were in one of the hallways and everybody was up front and I stayed behind because I'm always really kind of uh, um, just observing everything that was going on in front of me with the, the devices and the uh, people with us in our group. And um, all I remember is feeling uh, coldness inside and I shivered because I had never felt something like that. This was like internal cold and then I started feeling numbness and cold on my fingers. I remember talking, uh, Ray asking, are you okay? And I said, I don't know. I'm just feeling a really cold, cold feeling. And at that time, and I, Alejandro uh, heard and 
And then everybody started coming towards me and, and I would feel my hand was numb. Started from my fingertips and it was going up my arm. And uh, at that time Alejandro came and grabbed hold of my hand. I could feel my hand as if it was a block of ice and I felt his hand and it was very hot to the touch. And then somebody else, I think it's Martinez, I remember the last name, he came with his device and you could see uh, the, uh, with a heat, it was a heat sensor where the cold was at and they kept saying that my hand was blue. As far as uh, spirits, I know there is something and uh, people don't understand, but I do believe there is something here uh, at this hotel. And I am glad I had the experience. And uh, for my birthday, I did have something different. Uh, I'm Stephen Woodard from Ghost Tech here in Ballinger, Texas. I have a paranormal group here in, in Ballinger, Texas, and we've uh, done a few investigations here at this hotel. I'm going to let you know what we have come across through our investigations. It's like right here when we first come in and did an investigation, and, we, and we've done several events here in this hotel. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll come through, and it'd either be me or another member with our team. Uh, this door sometimes would open up by itself and close by itself with nobody in this area. This door right here? This door right here. This goes into the, the kitchen on the other side through the main hallway here on the bottom floor. So it would like unlatch itself. Unlatch itself completely and, and it open up and or close. Okay. Uh, the next major thing that we've ever had happen down here, it's gonna be in the very back. Always get a real uneasy feeling when you come down here, and it, especially the closer you get towards the end. Mm -hmm. All right, I can say, you know, uh, from the people we've had in here and with us, and I've actually been down here with Dan LaFave, the owner of the hotel himself. The first thing that kind of grabs my attention is kind of gravitates me towards this room here. But this, but there's not, it's more like, it always feels like a distraction to me because there's nothing there. This is it. Yeah. This is where, come here and it's always, it's like a dark feeling. And it takes over you sometimes mm -hmm. and it will take over you. Me and Dan ourselves have actually stood right here and actually seen movement in this room here. And with that movement, it, um, and then just get this feeling of grief and hatred and something like wanting to hurt you. And uh, you start hearing voices coming like from the ceiling, just in this area. And also, um, <laughs> just like right now. Yeah. <laughs> kind of something to sit out, it didn't want me, want me near there. And just gave me a get back. Not really saying it, but I felt that. Yeah. But like I said, every time I come here, it's like usually always a focus. Kind of makes me believe that, you know, the there may be a spirit here, that whatever's there is dark and it and is suppressing the spirit. Or the spirit here needs help. It's kind of a kind of a weird feeling. You remember, like I just said, with the isolation session, Dan he was standing right here and he caught those voices that please don't go. Come on now, I need you. Yeah. What if that spirit that you're referring to is is speaking in this area who needs help from the dark entity or I'm not really gonna jump into the demonic right now, but the the dark energy is lashing out against these spirits and they're calling to us for help because remember down there we it said it asked for Tyler and then it said help. So do they need help crossing over or do they actually need help from something else that's down in here and nesting inside this room? I mean, to me, that's a pretty good theory. Because now that you just said that and what we've experienced before, it fits like a puzzle. Yeah, it does. And yeah, now that you guys are saying that, it kind of puts together what we kind of come, like I said, the owner herself, we were here and we experienced this. And it's like, it feels a very heavy, I can't get out. And this here is, it was projecting a lot of, I wouldn't say, like you said, demonic. Right. But I would say something dark or angry. Angry, or I would even say, uh, uh, trying to think of the words. 
Oh, very hostile. Mm -hmm. That's the word I'm going to say just right now because that chill just went right up my neck. Yeah, I get to see that. Yeah. So it's, yeah, there and I would, yeah, let's get away from here. All right. We had a Hallow Scream here event mm -hmm. and I myself was a guide and I would guide people during the event up the stairs. I had a group come through and they were under me and the whole time these people paid their money to come to a Halloween event and they were saying, uh, this is not paranormal, it's not paranormal. And I'm like, it's a haunted attraction. So it's gonna be a haunted attraction. So we went through the course, all through the haunted house, got them through it. And right out the back door, the whole time, they're saying this is not paranormal. They decided they want to do another trip. I got them the next trip. The next trip I got them up, we come up the stairs. And I myself was the guide, so I come around and I stand right here. The group comes up, up the stairs, and they stop just a little past where you are now here. And so, doing the spill of, of the guide, I'll start in, you know, telling them what we're gonna tell them for the haunted house. This door slams completely open with force. Like, just like. Like, slams open. Wow. <laughs> so, they're here, they're looking. So I walk over, look in, nobody in there. It's not a very big room at all, it's a bathroom. Mm -hmm. There's a toilet here, there's a uh, bathtub right here with a curtain. So we look around. Now this is what's in here and we, we actually open this curtain. And yeah, I don't want to sound the door the way it did, but it slammed hard. Everybody downstairs heard it. Everybody down that way heard it. And the only thing that I can respond back to them is, you just got your paranormal. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a, some of it right there. And usually like a lot of spirits out there, like if they know, if the spirits know that they are in fact dead and they know that they're in the spirit world, then they feel like they're disrespected like that. They can lash out like, all right, here I am. I'm gonna show it to you, bam, and then that happens. I think they just wanna be heard. Yeah. I think they just wanna be heard and have their stories told. Yeah, the fact that more and more people are coming here and doing this stuff, the more and more puzzles, like we just put together downstairs, more and more mysteries and historical uh, facts are coming through because of this. Yes. And so, the, that's what the paranormal field really is. It's theories and puzzles from history and fact and the spirit world all put together to come up with the actual truth of the location you're in, which is why a lot of times, the only times you'll ever see people inside something is if the building's over 100 years old or 150 years old, et cetera, et cetera. You don't see very many people going into a building that was built a year ago because odds are that, that doesn't have the historical feel, the historical facts that the paranormal builds together into this puzzle and then it just completes the whole field. Yeah. And that's why I love it. Yes. There's really one other thing, one other major experience that happened here that I can tell you guys it happened and it's on video and you guys have permission for me to use it. If you want to show the video okay. of what we caught and it's going to be at the very end down here. We were here doing a spirit box session right here with this chair right here and would say she was standing more right, matter of fact, exactly right here. And exactly at this point right here, she's standing and she goes, I'm standing actually right here. And then I move back to where she's at because she's got the camera here and I'm standing right here. And then I see with my own eyes something materialize into like a mist. And I said, is that you I see in the bathroom? She stands right here and pans the camera right here to the corner of the room. And Eamon shows up. Well, she kind of gets, oh, I, said, I wouldn't say a little upset, but it kind of startled her. She jumped back. That's when we stopped everything we did, 
turn the lights on, looked in, you know, nothing on this wall. And it, uh, it was a clear face. I would say a face of maybe two or three people, or even up to one. But the face, the face would have showed up right here in this, actually right in this crack area because of where she was standing. So you had a crazy experience in here, right? Yes, I've had experiences both back there and in the front. Okay, what happened here? Um, well, it wasn't really so much here by the door. It was when I was in the back. Um, I was back there doing an EVP session by myself and uh, I had never really been back there before to do an EVP session. Um, but the, from the moment I walked into this building, I had a creepy sensation of feeling about that back area. And I just couldn't go in that room. I'm not even psychic, I'm not sensitive, but for some reason, I was affected by this room. So I'm, I've never been known to have any issues. Like I've never, I've been the skeptical one, I've been the one that doesn't have any psychic ability. I'm the one that uh, looks at things rationally and doesn't matrix and make up stuff as I go. But when I was back there, I've just been creeped out. And so I decided to go back there and do my thing one time. And we got some incredible EVPs that answered back. Um, one of them would said, it's Johnny. And uh, we had never gotten a Johnny before. Um, and then we did some research and, and learned that there were several Johns or Johnnies that were here. Johnny was Jeanette's husband, right? And then John Keel was her grandfather. So, and it's funny how those names pop up again, right? But uh, I've 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 been creeped out by that back area ever since. So the very first experience I ever had, and this was the first time I've ever been here by myself. Mm -hmm. We had just bought the property in July, and I think it was probably August or September. I was in here uh, by myself. I decided to come up earlier before Dan got here. And I was doing some paperwork up front, trying to get some stuff done, and uh, just minding my own business. And you can hear things outside, but what I heard that day was not from outside. Right. I heard an incredible loud steel banging noise, and I knew after I heard it, boom, 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 with, that it must be this from door? this door. Yes. Like, well, like. Yes, it sounded just like that, and I, it echoed all the way up front. And I knew that, and I've never heard that noise ever since. So I know it's not something from outside. I know that it has to be this door. Right. Because this is the only, this is the only door we have that's steel mm -hmm. that can make that kind of a noise in the building. It's all concrete and wood. Wow. So it, was, it, was, it startled me. I was just like, whoa, what was that? Right. It was a way of the spirit saying, hi, I'm here. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> right, in a really crazy kind of way. Yeah. All right. It's pretty nuts. All right, we're here with Dan Lefebvre, the owner of the Old Park Hotel. He's going to take us through here and show us what all the new things have been happening since the last time we were here. The last uh, five, six months, been a lot of activity. And when I say a lot of activity, there normally is activity all the time in here. Right. But the last five or six months, it's been crazy on such a level that some of it's just downright scary. Now, one of the, probably one of the craziest things that I encountered a few months ago was an overnight group came in here. It's three men and a woman. And of course they came in here to spend the night, investigate, but right after they got here, two of them decided to leave and they were gonna go to Abilene. They were gonna be gone for uh, several hours is what they told us. They were going to some concert or something. Right. So I heard him go out the door. The sun was just going down. It just gotten dark. I was telling the other man about this area right here. The last four months, we've been getting some really strong EVPs. So we tend to do a lot of recordings right here with people. And we just pull out some phenomenal EVP responses. And one of them we believe is the spirit of a woman goes by the name of Annie. We think she's from the old brothel days and she just likes to talk with everybody right, right here. So we decided to come up here and he wanted to do an EVP session to see if we could talk to Annie. So we set up the same way we always do, except this night it was different. This night when we set up, we put a K2 meter down on the floor, it was all in the dark. We were, I was sitting right here, he was sitting right there. I took it back. I was there, he was here. 
we were doing this session and at that moment we hear a noise down this hallway and we both look and right at that moment he's like what's that and we literally turn around and we look down this hallway and we saw what looked like two figures starting from the back of the hallway walking this way two shadow shadowy black figures so our attention was on them wondering what they were going to do so we're like basically all bent out looking down this hallway all our attention but right at that moment we hear what sounds like two men walking up the staircase behind you and it was so distinct and so loud and so natural sounding that neither one of us turned around to look because we assumed it was the two men they had come back for some reason that's what it sounded like like they were coming back up so we just continued to watch the shadow figures as we heard all these steps come up up that staircase very loudly mm -hmm. all the way to the top and right at that moment the steps stopped and I turned around to say something to them about these shadow figures that we were seeing coming down the hallway and when I turned around and he turned around there was nobody on that staircase this room since we opened this hotel to the public as you know is very freaky a lot of different things have been happening in here especially with this chair that closet the overall feeling of anybody that comes in this room but something really phenomenal and just downright scary happened probably a good four months ago before halloween we had a ghost tour in here just like we always do our evening ghost tours and this particular group it was three women and just myself about an hour and 30 minutes into the ghost tour i brought them back here again when we walked in nothing was happening with the k2 they weren't feeling strange one of the women sat down right in this chair another woman was standing in the doorway another woman was over here I was over here observing everything for some reason I don't know why she had the k2 meter on her knee and she started somewhat provoking the spirit she basically started calling out I'm in your chair right. what are you gonna do about it we've heard all these stories about the chair what are you gonna do to me all this stuff the moment she those words came out of her mouth. That K2 meter that had been dead for the whole night suddenly went red. Right at the moment the K2 meters went off, that woman gets grabbed, then we actually saw the chair come back. Like, like, like a jerky motion. Wow. <laughs> and right after this happened, all three of those women were ready to leave. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, so in here, it looks like you've got a bunch of creepy dolls and toys set up everywhere to get these eyes on you. So what exactly is this about? Correct. This room right now is in the beginning stages. There's going to be more. Oh, there's going to be a lot more. <laughs> you think this room looks creepy now, it's going to look creepier as time goes by and we bring in more things. What we've been doing is this has been an idea. I've had for a while, we have multiple child spirits in this hotel, as you know. What we're trying to do is getting more interaction. Right, so like pretty much just this room being like a trigger space for all the children exactly. that are running around. Exactly. This sense. room is a ghostly toy room, mm -hmm. is what we're trying to do. And you're right, a lot of these things are creepy. <laughs> And there's going to be a lot creepier things in here. As you can see, I brought in rocking horses. Yeah. Um, he's our newest addition. There's a story to him, by the way. This belonged to somebody who had a lot of things happening in their house. Really? And they owned this for 20 years. Okay. And at one point, she did everything she could to get rid of it and she gave it to her mother and she for the longest time it disappeared 
and then one day it pops up in her house again. And it creeped her out so much that she would hide this clown. There's no one in her house like this clown. I don't know how to. So down here you've had a lot of experiences? Correct. All right. There's me... stuff happening down here all the time. Okay, we'll go down here and check them out. Okay. This right here is the spot where you were hearing some running upstairs? Correct. I, uh, most people don't realize, but I'm in this building alone mm -hmm. a lot of times doing things. And uh, even during the day, just like it is right now, I mean, most people don't realize this is the afternoon right now. This is what this place looks like. And you can see it's creepy. Yeah. And when I come down here a lot of times, I don't turn on the lights. I just come down here to bring a box or something. And a lot of times I'm right here in this spot doing something. I'm not looking for ghosts. I'm not expecting them. And all of a sudden something will run or walk really heavy in a fast manner down that hallway right above us. And it is loud. It is hard to describe to people, but it is so loud that I usually have to go check to make sure that somebody didn't break in. Right. Because that's what it sounds like. Wow. Next time on Concho Valley Paranormal, the official investigation of the hotel kicks off beginning with our isolation sessions. During my session, you will witness one of the most intense personal experiences I have ever had. What the hell?